The word Renaissance means to be reborn. It is used to describe an enormously important movement of cultural rebirth that began in Italy in the early 1300s, gradually spread northward to other European countries, and finally ended around 1650. The Renaissance was a unique period of history, an era when people actively sought to improve their own cultures by attempting to recapture some of the greatness of the long-forgotten civilizations of ancient Greece and Rome. The Renaissance was a time when new styles of art were developed, when the first Protestant religions were born, when big advances in science expanded basic understanding of our solar system and of human life itself. The Renaissance was also the time when books first became widely available and was when the first great voyages of world exploration began. Because the Renaissance was inspired by the great accomplishments of the civilizations of ancient Greece and Rome, we shall begin this program with a review of what these civilizations were like and how their great achievements came to be forgotten. The highly civilized people who lived in ancient Greece, hundreds of years before the birth of Christ, produced marvelous works of art and architecture and made lasting contributions to mathematics, science, government, and literature. The Greek Empire developed along the Mediterranean and Black Seas and at one time reached as far as India. Greeks even ruled Egypt for hundreds of years. Eventually, the Greek Empire was overtaken by the forces of another great empire that was based on the Italian peninsula in the city of Rome. And even though the Romans had conquered Greece, they had such a deep admiration for the Greek culture that they ended up absorbing much of it into their own. By 100 AD, the Roman Empire had expanded across Europe as far north as Scotland and into Asia and Africa as well. The Roman Empire was truly magnificent. Its provinces in Europe were linked to the capital by over 50,000 miles or 83,000 kilometers of paved roads, as well as by a highly organized military system government, and laws. Wherever the Romans colonized, they introduced their Latin language and their style of art and architecture. They built fine towns and cities with excellent water systems, huge bridges, and so forth. For centuries, the Roman civilization and learning flourished. But over time, corruption, complacency, and decadence weakened the Roman Empire from within. Until finally, in the year 476 A.D., the great city of Rome was captured and destroyed by uncivilized barbarian tribes who came from what is now Germany. And this crucial event set off what is sometimes called the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages was when barbarians took control all across Europe. It is the first part of the Middle Ages, or medieval era, so called because it lies in the middle between the fall of Rome and the Renaissance. During the Dark Ages, the magnificent Greco-Roman culture declined and was almost forgotten. And it was not until the start of the Renaissance, 800 years later, that its greatness began to be rediscovered. To glimpse the process of cultural decline that occurred during the Dark Ages, it is interesting to look at what happened when Roman troops pulled out of their northernmost province of Britannia in order to defend their besieged capital far away to the south. With the land of Britain undefended, members of four different barbarian tribes crossed the North Sea and settled there. They built houses in the traditional architectural styles with which they were familiar. Their new villages were constructed using wood and thatch and were quite primitive when compared to the Roman towns of stone, brick, and tile that came before them. That was because the engineering and mathematics skills that had made it possible for the Romans to build elaborate buildings 
complex water and drainage systems, bridges, and so forth, did not exist among the uneducated barbarians. And because the barbarians lacked many artistic skills possessed by the Romans as well, the artwork with which they adorned their buildings appeared fairly primitive by comparison. But it is important to note that although learning significantly declined during the Dark Ages, the Christian religion that the barbarians had acquired from Roman Catholic priests took hold across most of Europe. The church ran a few schools, and monks managed to transcribe some of the crumbling books that had survived from the days of ancient Greece and Rome, so that the valuable knowledge they contained would not be lost to mankind forever. Most of these ancient texts would later be translated and reprinted during the Renaissance. The period of history that followed the Dark Ages, around the year 1100, is often called the High Middle Ages. This was a far more inspired era than the Dark Ages. And it is important to realize that it was people who had been influenced by the ideas and events of this period that founded the Renaissance. The High Middle Ages was the time when most of Europe's finest cathedrals and castles were built. It was also a time when the Roman Catholic Church exerted tremendous power over both kings and common folk alike. By the 1200s, more than 10% of the people of Western Europe led religious lives as Catholic monks, nuns, or priests. Back then, nearly everyone believed that, in and of itself, life on earth was of little value. Life was seen merely as a doorway leading either to the eternal pleasure of heaven or to the eternal misery of hell. Medieval artwork strongly reinforced these beliefs, taught Bible stories, and acted to inspire a deep sense of religious devotion among the mostly illiterate population of Europe. And perhaps it was because so much of the people's attention was focused on their inner spiritual lives at this time that much less energy was devoted to exploring and understanding the physical world that surrounded them. It was here in northern Italy that the first noticeable changes in the medieval way of doing things started to occur right around the dawn of the 14th century. This was the beginning of the Renaissance. During the medieval era, the study of theology the study of God, was the most important branch of learning. But during the Renaissance, people began to pay more attention to earthly life, and the study of humanity, or humanism, became a major focus of scholarly attention. Renaissance humanists relied purely on reason, as opposed to such things as mysticism or astrology, to investigate subjects they believed might help them understand human life and solve the problems that faced mankind. To do this, they actively studied the civilizations of ancient Greece and Rome, because they believed that these civilizations had excelled in humanistic subjects. They dug through ruins for anything that remained of the long-forgotten classical cultures, and marveled at the fabulous works of art and architecture they discovered. And Renaissance humanists traveled to distant monasteries in search of ancient books, for they believed that the wisdom of the past would provide the insights they needed to better understand mankind, the world, and the universe. When the Renaissance began in the early 1300s, the northern part of the Italian peninsula was dotted with a number of city-states a city-state being a small nation ruled by a city. One of the best-known city-states was Venice, which had grown exceedingly wealthy and powerful due to its trade links with Asia. Another important city-state was Florence. It was an important financial center that became a center for Renaissance literature and art as well. During the Renaissance, except for the papal states that were ruled by the Pope, the Italian city-states were ruled by upper-class families. Florence, for example, came to be ruled by the Medici family, owners of the largest banking empire in Europe. The Medicis and other powerful families like them 
used some of their enormous wealth to encourage and support scholars, writers, scientists, and artists. And it was thanks to patrons like them that Renaissance learning and art was able to truly flourish in Italy. During the Renaissance, artists developed many individualistic styles of expression compared to the much more uniform styles developed during the medieval era. And they worked at creating more believable representations than the medieval artists had produced. For example, the people depicted in this medieval stained glass look unrealistic and flat, whereas the figure in this Renaissance stained glass window looks much more lifelike, in part because it possesses the illusion of having a third dimension, depth, due to the use of shading. Renaissance artists also discovered how to use perspective to create the illusion of distance. This was accomplished by progressively decreasing the size of objects, making them appear to recede in space, thus duplicating on a flat surface how humans naturally see things. When perspective first came into use in Renaissance art, it had a captivating, almost magical effect on people, nearly as magical as the first photographs were when they were introduced 500 years later. One other important difference between Renaissance and medieval art was that Renaissance artists preferred to glorify the human body, as the ancient Greeks and Romans had done. In contrast, during medieval times, the body was generally considered to be an obstacle to spiritual progress and not something worthy of glorification. But renewed interest in accurately portraying the human body in art during the Renaissance had an important effect on science as well because it helped inspire the first in-depth investigation into the structure of the human body since the days of ancient Rome. During medieval times, cutting open dead human bodies, even for purposes of medical research, was not an acceptable practice. Consequently, medieval understanding of human anatomy was limited and often inaccurate. But a Belgian doctor named Andreas Vesalius, considered to be the father of modern anatomy, boldly struck out against old medieval attitudes. Vesalius collected corpses from gallows and graveyards and used knives and other tools to perform dissections in order to make detailed observations of all aspects of the body's structure. His thorough studies were assembled into a famous illustrated book that inspired many others to follow in his footsteps. And today, the study of human anatomy is the basis of modern medicine. True or false, during the Renaissance, a unified Italian nation did not exist. True or false, the Dark Ages occurred during the last part of the medieval era. True or false, the Renaissance began in northern Spain. True or false, humanism is the study of God. True or false, perspective was rarely used in medieval art. <laughs>